everybody, Josh your RV Nerd with Fish's RV here at Ibex today with some updates on their 19 MSB, yeah, you know me. This is a smart solo or couples camper that gives us the features of bigger, heavier trailers and a smaller, lighter, easier towing package with, I feel, about the best suspension system that's really available in the RV industry for travel trailers today. They call it their beast mode suspension, but it's a Kurt true four-wheel independent trailing arm suspension. It's basically an off-road suspension, but that doesn't mean that it can't work really well on highways. And the thing is, by building this thing intelligently and keeping the weight in check, They've kept the cargo capacity way, way up compared to a lot of things up there. It's got about a thousand pounds more cargo than a lot of other trailers that I see in a similar size and layout. Like if you look at this thing, you have a true queen bed up front. You have a sofa slide. And for dining, you've got a cool little elevated kind of kitchen breakfast bar that can double as prep space. I really love the layout. But what's nice is if you do get stuck inside for an extended time on a rainy day, you can put the bed away and expand your floor plan and make it feel more kind of like a super slide camper and basically have a double Dynofa, especially considering the fact that in addition to that dining bar, you also have a floating folding leg table that if you want to take it outside, if you want to use it inside, like you actually could have four people sitting inside the RV eating or something like that. Or like if there's one or two of you and maybe you have an occasional guest or something like that, it's nice that you have that additional space. Now there's some super cool things Ibex is doing. Their roof decking, their floor decking is all thicker than almost anybody else that you run into. They have more factory solar and factory inverter power than almost anything else available in this class or anything remotely to it. Tank heaters and a bunch of other cool stuff. But it's also got some things I don't think some people are going to like. I think some people might find certain things in this deal breakers. I want to show you the good with the bad. Let you decide what you like. And if you like that, hit that like button. I've said like too many times. Or subscribe to the videos. You get the idea. YouTube things I got to say. Let's go. <laughs> this RV, uh, like I said, I think is a really smart combination of features. The floor plan generally reminds me of something like a, a Rockwood 2109, a Freedom Express 192, or some other similar builds from other builders out there. But it definitely finds a way to do its own thing here and there. Uh, first of all, one of the cool things just right up top here, no pun intended, is the air conditioner. It's a 15,000 BTU air conditioner unit. So, uh, you know, it's a non-ducted unit, but in a small space like this, generally speaking, it's going to keep up pretty well. Now, the bathroom doesn't directly get ducted air, so it might get a little bit warmer back there, especially when you're taking a shower. Thankfully, you do have one of those bigger XL vent fans back there to kind of help offset some of that. The uh, sofa, one of the things here with this RV, this is on a smaller frame and chassis. So it is going to be a jackknife bifold sofa. And if you look very closely, you can actually see the bottom of the slide right there. It's not possible to run the slide all the way down because of that wooden box, which is the wheel well. Uh, so it's not possible in this model to like outfit it with a theater style seat or anything like that. It just, that's one of the things where it's going to be what it is. However, um, when we get the bed put away, there's really nice space uh, in front of that between the bed and those um, kind of elevated dining bar chairs. You can kind of see peeking up over the top right there. Uh, so they're like, if you want to get some of those little cube storage ottoman uh, kind of jobs, that could actually work pretty nicely for you. But this right here, again, I think is cool because if you don't care about a Murphy bed and you just want a true queen bed, you got it. But if you need the room or uh, if you forget... Uh, what continent uh, upon which you are currently residing, they give you a handy map of most of that continent, not the entire thing. People forget that uh, the continent of North America includes more than just America. I was really a little bit curious, though, who Mr. Egan was, because it looks like that state belongs to Mr. Mitch Egan. Uh, but uh, neither here nor there. Moving on. Um, you see how your hanging wardrobe towers are kind of glowing? You can turn that uh, little... Um, <laughs> Mountain Dew Baja Blast Blue Light. <laughs> you can turn that off if you want. Both sides of the bed do have household and USB plugs. Um, but the, the the household plugs on this one, they're, they're more functional when the bed's in the down position. Over here, though, you have your USB plugs and your inverter controller. Every single outlet in this RV is already wired, not just prepped, but wired to a 2,000-watt inverter. Um, if you're not quite sure what that means... Um, if, if you buy most RVs and you decide you want to go camping when there's not hookups and you don't have a generator, 
your outlets won't work. Your microwave, stuff like that won't work. Well, this 2000 watt inverter um, will power up every single household outlet. I don't believe it's actually wired to the microwave. It's not going to run the air conditioner, but it, uh, you could run your household outlets. Keep in mind when you do that, you will deplete your battery reserves more quickly. So you need to kind of plan carefully and accordingly. You know, how much solar do I need um, you know, is one of those questions. There's no answer to it. It's one, it's not one size fits all. It's what size fits you. It's a very tricky thing that, uh, it, it takes time to really properly dissect all of that. Um, again, though, you've got the elevated bar and even during the day, if you slide those chairs back, you can see how there's still plenty of room at the foot of that bed right there. Then obviously under the bed, you could use it for general storage. It could be a uh, spot for, I don't know, maybe a cat litter box or something like that. It could be your shoe garage. You could add some little sliding totes under it. There's like, there's a lot of different things and functions you could accomplish with that little area. But based on the feedback I've had on these videos, and please keep it coming. If this is how you feel, I want you to continue to voice your opinion so manufacturers uh, hear that it is a real thing. I've heard that a lot of people do not like seeing the bottom of the mattress when the bed's in the uh, up position. So there's the thing. Now, here's another thing to kind of consider. One of the things with a bendy bed like this is you have to make the mattress, or you have to make your bedding mostly every morning, every night. Fitted sheets help. But um, when it's in the up position, you kind of have a cargo pocket sort of hidden away, squirreled away up there. But it's kind of funny because this RV has a front window but uh, I think a lot of the time when you're when you're using it in Murphy mode, you're kind of wasting that. So I don't know. Do you do you like the front window on it, or would you prefer that just be gone? I mean, leave me a comment. Let me know. Like the Essentials series of Ibex models, um, those don't have a front windshield because those are a little bit more Essentials. Um, you know, they're a little less love and a lot more action, if you will. <laughs> now, if you don't care for these chairs they could also go away are there power outlets down here i didn't look okay so there's a power outlet right beside it that could kind of do the trick for you i haven't found a ton of kitchen outlets i'm going to try to point out a couple more as i see them now this tv one of the nice things here is it can really kind of pivot around to wherever you need it if you even care about tv there's so many people still that leave me comments like i think tvs and campers are stupid and i think that's okay keep leaving that feedback again that's Boop. Sorry, bump the power button. Don't know when I did that, but I, I I don't know where I left off. But there's some folks who don't want TVs and RVs. Again, keep the feedback coming. That's how manufacturers learn what you want. Because remember this, it, to a very real degree, a manufacturer doesn't necessarily care what they build. By that, I mean, you know, some manufacturers are, are still very interested in trying to do a good job, but some, they, they want to build the floor plan that you want to buy. So... You know, when you leave those notes, there have been plenty of instances already where people have left a lot of comments on this channel, sometimes for a couple years before they finally got their way. But if enough people feel a certain way, manufacturers tend to start listening and doing that thing. You know what I mean? Um, there, there are no different decors in these, so I hope you like the look of it. Now, it is very middle-middle. You know, it's very, very neutral upon neutral. But it's also the kind of color scheme where, like, if you added... Like, a, you know, some, some pillows or throw blankets. You can you can pop some color into the sucker very, very quickly. Something I do like, and I'm going to demonstrate this later, is they have maintained struts for their overhead cabinets, which a lot of manufacturers haven't. And that is a uh, pocket-screwed lumber core style of construction. Now, the refrigerator, that is a 12-volt compressor fridge. And they are standard now outfitting these with 400 watts of solar. There might have been a small number of Ibexes that uh, originally kind of slipped out in the early 24 generation that did not yet have that feature, but they do now, and I think that's pretty awesome. Now, down below here, they are one of a, I, I only know of about five different series of RVs uh, in travel trailers that include a factory standard central vac system. That is kind of cool. Now, you may notice they are not doing a propane oven in the kitchen. They do a convection microwave down below so they can maximize their overhead storage. That's just the way Ibex does things. And if that doesn't work for you, that's okay. We have other trailers that you may prefer a little bit, but that's that's how Ibex does things. Now, I'm gonna take another seat over here uh, at the sofa. With the windows on that wardrobe, it kind of helps everything look bigger over there, but that's sort of a false sense of impression. You have a viewing window in the door that is privacy shade prepped. Um, we have a decent size kitchen window right here, not the world's biggest. 
Then of course you have your bedroom sofa breeze across window there. So campsite window coverage is not terrible. It's not the world's greatest, but it's also not the world's worst. Okay, so I was looking for more power outlets. I just stumbled right into a couple. I kind of like, I mean, well, let me ask you. Do you like their location just below the countertop line like that? Because with uh, the, the laminated wall that they have here, they can't put them in the walls. They could put them under that overhead cabinet, but that's quite tall. That's not my favorite place to put them. Where would you like to see them do the outlets? Leave me a little comment. While you're doing that, I'm going to keep on keeping on like Joe Dirt here because life's a garden. Dig it, brother. And I, I want to, uh, well, figuratively dive into this sink. I threw the TPMS system down in there so that you could actually see kind of um, how deep that is because it's a deceptively deep sink, but it is a circular sink. But I don't know, is it big enough, you think? Or should it be a different kind of sink? Leave me a note, let me know. In that rear closet cabinet pantry combo, by the way, there's like a little mini storage safe, which is, uh, I don't know, for some folks kind of nice. That television, by the way, is 12 volt. I don't think I mentioned that sooner. And showing you how the Murphy bed works here, it is lightweight, it is simple, it is easy. It is also true queen sized. So my feet don't really hang off the bed, which is something I prefer. And there are pockets um, on either sides of the uh, the headboard wardrobe tower area, which is nice. Um, however, they don't have power outlets in them like a lot of RVs do. They're not what I call power pockets. So that's maybe a thing to kind of think about and consider. But again, nothing says you have to use this as a Murphy bed model. And one of the cool things, and I'm going to show you this in a few minutes if you hang tight, you can close the slide with the bed down and uh, it, it's not a problem. Nothing conflicts with one another. There's no impacts, no damage, no trouble. So if you really don't care about the Murphy bed, and you're like, I love everything in this, but I just want a queen bed. Put a queen bed in it. Put a queen mattress in it. Do whatever you want. Now, some people ask me, can you replace that mattress with something else since it's a bendy bed? I've not personally done it. I don't personally know where to send you to get it done, but I'm a member of a lot of different like owners groups, Facebook groups for camping, that kind of thing. And specifically the Rockwood Mini Light RV group, that is a group that has done a lot of Murphy bed replacements, although they don't use a bendy bed. But my, my point is I have heard of um, Murphy bed owners having swapped their mattresses out. I know it can be done. I've also seen a lot of people say, we just put a really nice foam topper on it and it was never an issue after that. And I said, okay, cool, that makes sense. Now I'm just noticing, I forgot in the reflection of that uh, closet pantry combo over here, off the side of the kitchen counter, you've got a couple things. You've got a little switch for some indirect lighting, some USB plugs, and then this is a little slot that holds the handy little pizza peel for outside, which we're uh, going to see in more detail in a few minutes. Now, kind of like it doesn't have central air, it also lacks central heat. And I am wondering, I'll have to look from the outside of the RV, what is down below that furnace right there? I have to believe there's some kind of systems or functional things right there, because um, they're not the types that normally leave that empty. Now, anybody who owns a 19 MSB, have you ever dropped that panel? Leave me a comment if you have. Let me know what's down in there. In the meantime, moving on into the bathroom, because it's a narrow body camper and it is less than 25 feet tip to tail, I think they did the best they could in here. Like the space around the toilet is actually very, very nice. I will say the linen storage in the bathroom is very lacking and um, there's no real like places to hang towels. So what I might recommend doing is get one of those like towel hanging multi hooks that you could put on the uh, the back of this bathroom door right here. Um, uh, yeah, it, it just, that's the only thing that makes sense to me without sticking stuff on the walls, you know, cause with the laminated wall, you can't necessarily just screw stuff into the walls because there may not be structure in it to, to like affix things to. So that can be kind of tricky. Now they went with a little bit bigger profile sink, which limited your counter space a touch, but I mean, you either have to choose between a small sink and better counter or better counter or yeah. Uh, better sink and smaller counter. Wow, my brain <laughs> for a second there. My brain sounded <laughs> my brain sounded like the old dial-up sounds for just uh, half a second there. <laughs> but um, the RV six and a half foot tall, floor to ceiling. So a little over six foot myself when I stand in the shower. You see that my head's definitely in the skylight, and it's a radius shower. The elbow room is not amazing in this, but small camper, I think they did what they could. I do also want to point out that it does have that handy shower miser system. If you're not familiar with that, if you are going to be camping without hookups, you while your, your shower water is warming up, 
you don't want to like waste your fresh tank going down into down the drain, right? So that will recycle the water back into your fresh tank. And uh, when the, the blue elbow turns white, well, then you know the temperature's right. But the thing is, for a while after you do that, you have warmed all of the water in your fresh tank. So that's something that you're going to have to kind of consider is like if you want to go get a cold drink of water after that, you better be getting a bottle of water out of the fridge because if you try to get it out of the tap, it's, <laughs> it's not going to be what you're expecting. Now, whether you do or don't consider this road mode accessible and functional probably depends a little bit on your personal stature. There is technically room to do a butt scoot boogie and slide between there. That is literally due to the fact that it's a seven foot, four inch wide body. If it was a more common seven foot body, it just when the slide closes up, it wouldn't work, you know? And again, when the slide closes, you can leave that bed down if you're so inclined. I also took the liberty here of actually showcasing how you should travel with that table. Now, you could always come up with a different way of doing it, but it's designed to basically buckle strap right down to that sofa. Um, I don't usually take the time to do stuff like that. I thought that might be kind of a nice, handy little detail there. If that was useful for you, I don't know, click a little like button on the video, drop me a little thanks, nerd, comment, something like that. But the fact is, the refrigerator, the bathroom, the kitchen, potentially the, um, the Murphy sofa are all travel accessible. So I'm not necessarily going to give it an A+, because it, it is a little bit subjective. Uh, but I, I don't know. I, I think B+, A- travel access on this one. What do you guys think? Overall, I, I've, <laughs> I've definitely seen worse. Now, something else that's cool on this one is its towability factors. It is light, it's small, it's narrow body, it's easier to see around. Um, and it's, it's just less, a couple inches less than 25 foot tip to tail, and again, it rides on that four-wheel trailing arm independent suspension package. Um, I've personally done some test drives with those things. They are legit. They live up to the hype. They track behind you so, so well. It, it's still probably a good idea to have like a weight distributing anti-sway hitch for most vehicles. Like, yeah, three-quarter ton truck, you don't need nothing like that. But think about those hitches like this. You're not going to regret the extra stability and safety you get from them, but you might regret not having them, so kind of keep that in mind. Up front, you see that little silvery circle with a triangle inside of it. That is a uh, dog leash latch, or the drunken uncle leash latch, as I like to say. And uh, something I think I forgot to talk about in my last Ibex video. I can't remember what order they come out. You see that little yellow antenna right there? These are outfitted with tire pressure monitoring factory standard. Now, the tinted windows are nice uh, during the day for privacy, but you got to understand, if the RV is lit up on the inside, uh, you know, People are going to be able to see through, so unless you're putting on a free show, you're going to want to kind of keep that in mind. Um, let's talk construction. The roof. Uh, instead of a 3 8 roof deck like almost any other camper out there, they're using a 3 quarter inch roof deck, just a bigger, thicker, heavier roof deck. Um, that is a very walkable roof deck. Uh, I might take you on a walk on the wild side up there in a few minutes. The sidewalls uh, under your fiberglass have Asdell. And uh, the flooring on this has like an inch and a quarter plywood floor decking. It is a laminated floor, but they're using a thicker floor deck than even non-laminated floor builders. So, I don't know. I feel pretty good about it. Actually, um, some friends of mine, other YouTubers, uh, you might have heard of them, RV Miles, Jason and Abby. Uh, they have an Ibex. And... Uh, they've been very happy with it. They took the thing uh, from, the, you know, the lower continental states up to Alaska and back and had very little kind of concern factors with it. This is one of the newer things. At the very beginning of the 24 camping season, a couple Ibexes got out that didn't have this. But in addition to the little side mount griddle that you've had, there's also a new attachment. You can take the griddle top off and it has the little pizza oven and a handy little pizza peel to get that in now there so you don't got to burn your fingers, which is just genius. And there's still, of course, a propane cooker hooker down below that. And if you don't care about the pizza thing, uh, you know what? Has anyone ever cooked cookies or biscuits or anything else in one of those? Um, I, I could see that being kind of handy. Now, this table can go inside. And there's two different sofas that you can turn into dinofas with the help of this little guy. But because you've got the little dining table or well elevated bar and stuff in there and because space is limited inside i feel like it almost functions best as an exterior picnic table but that's just me that doesn't mean that it's my way or the highway by any means um now over here again tire pressure monitoring is standard but you have that four-wheel independent trailing arm suspension package on here giving you 
some of the best right in handling. But here's another thing. I personally suspect some things like the, 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 the heavier roof floor decking helping absorb more shock and jolt when you're going down the road and the better suspension package. Uh, I'm not saying they're perfect because I've, I've noticed a couple little glitches on this one, nothing major, but I've noticed a couple little things. But I, I suspect the better suspension and some of the other construction factors are going to help keep this RV out of the shop. Because if you think about it, you've probably heard the phrase an RV is a rolling earthquake. And if you haven't, you just did. It's a rolling earthquake with hurricane force winds outside. That's all true. That, that's a real, real thing if you think about it. Well, um, if you're absorbing more of that violence at the road level, every nut, bolt, screw, widget, and whiz bang has to absorb less of it, you know. Now, you do have that 250-pound rated ladder getting you up top there. Give you a look at the, uh, the, the roof area. Um, these do use a PVC roof membrane, which is actually kind of cool. But first of all, you see that little, the, the double tracks right there. Um, a lot of people are going to call it like a cargo mounting rack thing, but what I've found is a lot of owners of these aren't using it to like mount kayaks or bikes or anything. What they're actually using it for is like if they want to expand their solar, but that's another cool thing that Ibex is doing. In addition to a larger 2000 watt inverter from the factory, they're also standard with 400 watts of solar, which is cool. Now, if I'm not mistaken, they're still using a PWM charge controller, not an MPPT. So it could reasonably still improve a little bit uh, fairly easily, but fact is they're doing more solar than almost anyone else is doing standard on these. That's, I think that's a really nice thing to kind of point out right there. Now, this is one of my favorite little things. It's just the little silhouette of Bigfoot over here. You got to kind of look close to see it um, because you got to remember, guys, um, sometimes at night it's the wind that rocks your trailers, but not always. <laughs> sometimes it's a sassafras squatch. Um, and if you are a listener to Jables and Cage, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you're not, you think I'm just spouting gibberish, which I, in a way, kind of am. Uh, your underbelly, it is enclosed. They do have holding tank heaters standard on these. But you may also notice how their, uh, their gate valves and everything, um, they're all fully enclosed. And they have only a really small uh, termination end sticking out. And they were really smart to plumb everything together on this one. I mean... Overall, I'm pretty happy with what they've uh, done here, you know. I think probably the biggest concern factors folks have on this one is like the Murphy bed, the microwave, the bathroom, because otherwise, this thing is fantastic. And if you're okay with those little factors, man, this is, Ibex is one of those things like, uh, this is an extended member of the Surveyor family, basically, and Surveyor is another brand that the last couple years has really started walking up uh you know my personal list of brands that i respect now you can see how uh it is a big full pass through You're having a hard time seeing it though because we do have a lot of cargo stuffed in here but i did that on purpose because like you've got that grill griddle pizza thing you got to have a place to store it so the, 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 the pizza cooker that's on the side of the RV, that's like a display copy that I slapped on the RV. You're going to need to store all that stuff. So I left it in the boxes of this camper so that you can see how much space is in that passer. And it uses a chunk of it for sure. When you get it out of the boxes, it certainly uses less. But you do still have room in there for like wheel chocks and random little odds, ends, whiz bangs, and widgets. I do like the magnet holdbacks on there though. If I'm going to be ultra picky... It would be kind of nice if they uh, did what Rockwood recently did and went to um, all little slam latches with key locks all the way around. Is that something you think would be nice? You guys ever watch The Walking Dead? Like, I feel like this could do some real damage to a zombie, you know, especially the more squishy ones, the ones that aren't fresh, the ones that have been around for a while. Yeah, I, I, I call them wet and dry undead, uh, by the way, uh, but ne neither here nor there. Um, for ignoring the combat benefits of the pizza paddle over here, uh, this gives you a plus three to your uh, attack rolls for anyone who's familiar with Dungeons and Dragons. My nerds out there. Uh, <laughs> regardless. Let me know what you think about this one. Uh, I'm going to leave you some links in the description to check the price on this, but also some videos to some other layouts that are pretty similar. But that's the cool thing about Ibex. They're never exactly like anybody else out there. They're always just off center a little bit, kind of like me, just a little bit unhinged and off balance. You know what I mean? And until then, 
I'm going to go work on getting the next one for you. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy pizza battling, zombie apocalypse, everyone. Bye.